as we hold to this assurance. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. And pour it out. Let your love run over. Here and now. Let your glory spirit out and this next song just let it speak to you let it be our prayer today
want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you We don't really need to ask for anything else because God has already provided everything. Um, it says in his word that we are complete in Christ. When we are complete, that means we lack nothing. So whatever we think is um, empty, in empty spots, God fills that void. And that makes us 100% complete in him. Amen. So let's just worship him one more time because he is worthy. Amen. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is good. He is worthy. Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And thank you for joining us this morning. We will continue on. You may be seated. And at this time, I'm going to call up Pastor Tim. Thank you, Shalito. Good to see you in the house this morning. And uh, those of you that are watching us online or attempting to watch us online, as we have in the last few weeks, we are having technical difficulties, and uh, we have done our utmost to try to alleviate those, um, and we worked on those the other night, um, getting uh, pieces in place to help alleviate <laughs> hopefully, and uh, so the best laid plans um, are what we are working with and trying to do, but anyway, so uh, thank you for your patience and your prayers uh, in that matter, because uh, it's it's uh, something that we are uh, trying to troubleshoot and trying to get figured out, and it seems like everything that we do, you know, just uh, doesn't seem to work out, so uh, pray for us, pray for our uh, technology, pray for our ability to use the technology and to be able to figure out what indeed is going on, and, and uh, that would be a tremendous blessing. But 
You know, there's, there's no lag in the house of the Lord today, right here and right now. And I'm thankful that we're in the presence of the Lord and that we are gathered together here in this place. And so, you know, whatever, whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance is, whatever the situation, as Shalito just said, you know, in him there's no lack. In him we, we find completeness. We find our hope. We find our help. We find our strength. We find our healing. We find whatsoever that we need, we find it in Jesus. And that's why it's all about him. It's all for him. It's all because of him. And we just give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. And uh, he will continue to be the focal point of this church, of this assembly, of this people. And that, that's what it's all about. That's why we gather together uh, and lift up the name of the Lord. Because as we lift him up, he lifts us up. He draws us to him. And I don't know about you, but uh, I do know for me, I need to be drawn closer to him. I need the strength that he can provide. I need the help that he can provide. I need the hope that he can provide. I need the peace that he can provide. And he is the one that has unlimited resources for those needs that I have, those challenges that I face, those scenarios that I deal with. And when I say I, it's for me, but we all do, right? And so thank God for his grace and thank God for his peace. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord with you. And like we started off singing today, there is joy in the house of the Lord. And, uh, you know, maybe not in technology, but there's joy in the house of the Lord. Right? And uh, so I'm glad you're here, and it's good to be here with you. We started a series last week, and I'm going to jump right into that series again today because I've got a lot to cover for today's portion of this series. And the series is of God. Everybody say of God. Of God. That's That's what... The series is based on, and, and it's really, it really comes out of one scripture that, that kind of jumped out, leapt off the page at me. You ever have that happen? I mean, that happens to me more frequently uh, as, I'm, as I'm going through and reading the Bible um, daily, and we're going through our daily devotionals, Carlene and I, that something will just jump out. And, and maybe I've read it before several times. And all of a sudden, you know, the, the Holy Spirit will just quicken it to me in a new way. And I think that's so incredible how that works. But that, that kind of happened to this in this scenario. And um, today we're going to be talking the second part, which is living under the Word, uh, the Word of God. And we're, we're talking about being of God. We started off last week with the people of God and if we're the people of God, we are living under the word of God. There's the of God part. The word of God is the umbrella over our lives, the covering over our lives, or it should be if we are the people of God. If we, if we trace our steps back, if we're a person of God, then we are going to have an affinity for the word of God, a desire for the word of God, a love for the word of God. Because we're the people of God. Well, it all stems from 1 John 4.4, 4, and we'll start there again today as we will each of these uh, four sessions as we go through this Of God series. Thank you again for being along, and thank you for your uh, support, and thank you for your uh, connectivity with the Word of God and with the God of His Word here today at Restore Church. So good to have you in the house today. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 4, as I mentioned, New King James Version, you are of God. And there you go. What, what a statement right there. Just, just those four words. You are of God. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves and say, and we need to look in the mirror and say, I am of God. 
when you forget who you are, you need to remember that you are of God. If you are a Christian, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And the only reason that that latter part of the verse is a reality is because the former part of the verse is a reality, which is you are of God. Because if you're not of God, then you're not greater. You're not allowing somebody in you greater than he that's in the world. And the world is going to affect you adversely. But you are of God. So the world doesn't affect you adversely. You're in the world, but not of the world. You're of God. Come on, amen? And so that's what we're talking about, being of God today. And so the question that we posed last week, and we will pose again today, what are you of? What are you of? What is the centerpiece of your life? What is the central focus of your existence? That's the million-dollar question. Doesn't get any more important than that because that's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. If it's God, then you are what? You are God-centered. You are, as John said, of God. As we learned last week, that means you are a people of God. I'm a people of God. You're a people of God. We're the people of God. Come on, somebody, right? And so the premise of this series is what? It's being of God and recognizing what that means and understanding what that means, maybe getting revelation knowledge of what that means, and uh, that we are of God. I want to live in this world world, but not be of this world. I want to be of God while I'm in this world. And being of God matters. Being of God matters because we have this progression, which is the basis of the four parts of this series that we are working through. It starts off with this, when you, the people of God, which we kind of laid out last week, live under the word of God, which is what we're going to be talking about today, you're directed by the spirit of God, (laughs) and increasingly experience the presence of God. Now, if you're not increasingly experiencing the presence of God, you need to work yourself back and say, am I being directed by the Spirit of God? And and if you're having issues there, you need to take another step back and say, am I living under the Word of God? And if I'm having issues in that effect, you need to go back to the start, you know, and uh, do not pass go, do not pay $100. But go back to the start and say, am I a people of God? Am I of God? Because there is a progression that we need to understand. If you're truly a person of God, you're going to live by the word of God. The ultimate authority in your life is not what he says, she says, they say. It's what saith God the Lord, in his word, the word of God. It's not the word of man. It's not the word of the world. But it's the word of God which lives and abides forever. So getting back to the question, the question is, what is, is at the center of your life. What does your life, present and future, revolve around? 
for the people of God, it is to be the Word of God. Now, where is that coming from? Well, let's go back and find out. How do we find out? Well, not surprisingly, in the Word of God, <laughs> in the Bible. Where do we go to? Well, let's go all the way back to the book of Deuteronomy. When God was dealing with Moses, and Moses was leading God's people, the people of God, and what their requirement and what their calling was, and let's see how we fit in because that's written for our example, right? So Deuteronomy chapter 32, and starting with verse number 46, and all of this, I'm laying out a groundwork here. This is, this is, kind, of, this is kind of a lot to this today, so I'm, trying to, I'm gonna try to speed through the first part because I'm laying out a groundwork to get to what I wanna talk about, which is actually living under the word. And that's, that's the whole thing I wanna talk about, but I've gotta get us there and why we need to be there and uh, so in order to do that, i got to lay some groundwork. So this is the groundwork. Are okay, you ready? All right. Moses said to them, take to heart all these words I testify among you today so that you may command your children to carefully follow what? All the words of this law. Not some, not the ones we like, carefully follow all the words of this law. And it doesn't stop there. The very next verse, he goes on to say, these teachings, watch this, are not empty words. Are there empty words? Oh, yeah. There are, there's a lot of empty words flying around in this world that we live in today. I'm here to tell you. And they come all around us. These teachings, however, are not empty words. Watch this. They are your very life. Boom. Living under the word. Why? They are your very life. Obey them. And you will, what? Live and live long in that land across the Jordan you're about to occupy. Now, Moses is talking to the people of God and giving them a promise, but it's a conditional promise. And the promise is that, hey, you're going to have a long life and you're going to be blessed in a land that flows with milk and honey. But the prerequisite to getting that is this, obey and follow the words that you are given, the word of the Lord. These teachings aren't empty words, but they are your very life. Boom. And so we have some reasons. We have some, we have some uh, understanding as to why we are to live our lives under the canopy, if you will, of the word of God. Let me give you a few of them today. The first one is this. Again, this is all just, just laying groundwork. The first one is this, that the word of God is true. That's number one. It's true. That's it. The word of God, the Bible, is true. Buy the truth, sell it not. Psalm 119 and verse number 60 says the sum of your word, the totality of of your word, if you will, is what? It's truth. The word of God that we share is truth. There are a lot of words that you hear that are not truth, that are half truth, that are outright lies. But this word is truth. The sum of it is truth. And every one of your righteous rules endures 
forever. So the word of God is true. John 17 and 17, Jesus said, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. And so the word is true. So you can depend on this word, this Bible, the word of God, as being the truth. Secondly, the word of God is right. R-I-G-H-T. It is right. The psalmist concludes in Psalm 19 and verse number 8 that the commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. We'll get to that in just a minute, you know. But what, what God commands is not grievous, but it's joyous. That's why there's joy in the house of the Lord, we sang about a little bit ago. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing rejoicing to your heart. Psalm 33 and 4, the psalmist also goes on to say, for the word of the Lord is right and true. Here he combines both the truth that we started with and the right that we're hitting on right now. He combines them together. It's not only right, but it's also true. He's faithful in all that he does. You can depend on God. You can trust him. You can take him at his word, right? Because the word of the Lord is right and true. Thirdly, the word of God is eternal. Forever. It's forever, Alice. Forever. Psalm 119 and verse number 89 says this, Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 24 and 25, and actually Peter in this letter to the church is quoting Isaiah chapter number 40 and verse number 8 when he says, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord, what? Endures forever. And just in case you didn't know it, this is the word that was preached to you. Just FYI, if you were confused about what Isaiah was talking about and what I'm talking about, it's the word of the Lord that we're preaching and teaching and living by. That's what we're saying. That word is going to endure forever. And then the fourth reason, and I, I have more and more and more that I could go, but I'm just giving a foundation as to why we're to live under the word today, is that the word of God directs. That's number four. Yeah. It directs our lives. It directs our steps. It's a lamp for our feet. It's a light for our pathway, the word of God. The psalmist said in Psalm 119 and verse number 35, he said, direct me in the path of your what? Commands, your words, for there I find delight. Yeah, find help, I find strength, I find what I have need of. Everything I need, I find it here. That's why I need to be here. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to be here. That's why the enemy doesn't want you in the house of the Lord, doesn't want you hearing the word of God. Somebody said, well, I've been having trouble going to sleep. And I said, have you been reading your Bible? Try reading your Bible. Because, man, as soon as you start reading your Bible, you'll be ready to go to sleep. You start falling asleep. The enemy doesn't want you reading your Bible. doesn't want the Word of God in you. But direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. My soul, my life finds delight. Psalm 112 and verse number 1 says this, Happy is the person who honors the Lord, who takes pleasure in obeying his commands, in following his direction, in following his lead, in following the word of the Lord, man takes pleasure. Note that, that on all of these instances, the psalmist equates happiness with following the word of the Lord. 
He equates pleasure. He equates joy. He equates happiness. He equates what? Delight. All of these positive words with what? With following the word of God. God, with living under the Word of God. You see, it's important for us to live under the Word of God, but it's more than just important for us. And this is where we get messed up. And this is where Christians can get into issues and challenges and troubles because it's not just important for us to live under the Word of God. It's actually imperative for us to live under the Word of God. absolutely imperative. It's actually a matter of life and death. Let's go back to what Moses told the people of God. He said, if you do this, if you, if you obey this word, these aren't idle words. These aren't just, you know, words that you can't depend on, but these are the words of God. And if you will follow them, if you will live under them, you will indeed live. And you'll live long in the land that he gives you. So it's a matter of life and death. You see, the word of God, folks, is not a trivial matter. It's not just, well, I can take it or I can leave it, and it's really no big deal. And if I read the Bible, yeah, good. And, and if I don't, yeah, that's fine too. But actually, the truth of the matter is we need the Word of God. We need all of God's Word. It's more than just a trivial matter. It's actually a matter, as I mentioned, of life and death. If you treat the Scriptures as trivial, if you treat the Scriptures as merely empty words, if you treat the Scriptures as just another good book, then actually you're forfeiting the life that the Scriptures have in them for you. We need to understand how important it is for us to live under the Word of God because life is truly lived by God's Word. It all comes down to this. And so that was all groundwork to get to this place right here, that we need to experience life under the Word of God, and that the best life possible, the long life promised by God, is life that is lived under God's Word, the, the umbrella of God's Word, the canopy of God's Word, the covering of God's Word. It provides all of those things and so much more, and our life depends on it. Watch this. First of all, our physical life depends on the Word of God. Yeah, physical. Let's, let's get physical. Let's talk about the physical life. It depends on the Word of God. Do you know that? Did you know your physical life depends on the Word of God? My physical life depends on the Word of God. Do you know that by His Word, we were created? Our physical life, our physical bodies were created by his word. He spoke and it happened and we became. The psalmist said in Psalm 33 in verse number 6, the Lord made the heavens and everything in them by his word. There you go. Everything. You mean everything? Yes, everything. Physical life depends on the Word of God. Our physical surroundings depends on the Word of God. The breath that we breathe depends on the Word of God. It all came into existence because of the Word of God. And so, yes, we do need to live under the Word of God. The writer of Hebrews says this in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 3. By faith, 
we understand. <laughs> you have to have faith to understand it, but by faith we understand. There are a lot of people that don't have faith, they don't understand. But by faith we understand. What do we understand? We understand that the universe was created by the Word of God. Can I get a witness? So that what is seen was made from things that are not seen, not visible. Invisible forces that created what we visibly see, and that came directly from the Word of God. Proceed thou the mouth of God. Right? By faith we understand that. That everything was created by the Word of God. And so our physical life actually is dependent upon the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 3 says this, The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his nature. Watch this. Upholding all things by his powerful word. Everything is held together by the word of God. You don't think the word of God is important? You don't think the word of God is imperative? You don't think the word of God is necessary? Let me tell you what, everything is being held together in the entire universe by the word of God. Everything. His all-powerful word. And so, our physical life, getting back to that, then depends on the word of God, us being here. And that's why, that's why we pray. When we pray for people and, and people get sick and people, people need prayer and they come, you know, the, James said, hey, if any sick among you, let them come and uh, let, let the elders anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up, right? So what do we pray? We pray. We do just that. We anoint them with oil. But we pray, Lord, we just in agreement and we want this individual's body to line up with the word of God. Why? Because everything is being upheld by his powerful word. Everything revolves and flows from his powerful word. Oh, this is good stuff today. Come on now. And so our physical bodies, our physical life actually depends on the word of God. And, 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 and I'm, not, I, I'm certainly not anti-doctor and anti-medical and any of that, but I'm, but I'm certainly pro-spiritual and pro-word, and I believe that the word of God is right, and I believe that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and is able to make a way and align myself. I mean, when my vehicle gets out of alignment, I go and get the alignment fixed. Come on, somebody. And when my life is out of alignment, I need to get it aligned back with the word of God. Why? Because all life flows from the word of God, and I need to be in that right order, in that right position so that 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 life will flow through and to me. Come on, somebody. Oh, man. Amen? Amen. Amen and myself up here today. This is good stuff. But it's all flowing from and through the Word of God, which shows us the importance of the Word of God and how that we need the Word of God in our lives. And we need to be living under the authority and under the power and under the truth of the Word of God every single day that we live. If we are people of God, we should be living by the Word of God in everything that we do. He's upholding all things by his powerful word. Not some things. God is a God of order. He has everything in order, everything. He speaks and it is. And it happens. The authority and the power of his word. And that's what we're talking about today. Our physical life depends upon the word of God. And then secondly, not only are we physical, not only are we body, we're also spirit. And we have a spiritual life, right? 
We're born again of the water and the spirit. And so our spiritual life, well, well where does that come in? Well, well, our spiritual life begins by the word of God. Just as our physical life depends on the word of God, our spiritual life begins by the word of God. James put it this way in James 1.18. He said, God decided to give us life through the word of truth. Boom. Now, we know that in the beginning, John said, was the word, and the word was what? With God, and the word was what? It was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men, and that light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not, right? He came into his own, and his own received him not, but as many as received him. He's talking about who's the him. The him is the word of God. The word of God in person is none other than Jesus Christ, the living word incarnate, right? And so God decided to give us life through the word of truth. Who's that word of truth? Who is that living word incarnate? (laughs) Oh, man, it's good stuff, folks. Love this. Love the word. You see, so our spiritual life begins by the word of God. When the word, you know, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, we beheld his power, the power, glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. There you go. Man, I love that. And so God decides to give us life through that word of truth. First Peter puts it, Peter puts it this way in First Peter Chapter 1 and verse number 23, he said, having been born again through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Amen. I love that. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 4, what did Jesus say? He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, what, word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word that comes out of the mouth of God is what breathes life, is what gives life, is where life is found. And so our spiritual life begins when we receive Jesus Christ, the living word of God. And then after that, we're living by the word of God. And we're, we're obedient to the word of God. And we're following the word of God. And we're directed by the word of God. So our physical life is created and upheld by the word of God. And our spiritual life is quickened and sustained by the word of God. Oh, come on, somebody. You see how it works? That's why we have to realize today that the word of God is not just important, but it's necessary and it's imperative for each and every one of us to live by. I can't live an overcoming life without the word of God. I can't live a victorious life in Christ without the word of God. I need the word of God covering me, over me, hovering over me, if you will, whatever, whatever you know, euphemism you might want to make, but we need God's word in our life on a daily basis. And we've recognized that. My wife and I have recognized that to the extent that we begin every single day in the word of God. Every single day we, we spend at least a minimum a half hour in the word to an hour in the word every single day. Because our physical life is created and upheld by that word. Our spiritual life is quickened and sustained by that word. The word of God is a necessity in our lives. How many stories could be gathered to bear witness 
of the life-giving power of the Word of God. How many testimonies are there? Oh, they're myriad, aren't they? I mean, each one of you, you, you have more than one. You know, how many testimonies just in this room, just, just in Restore Church, of the restorative power of the Word of God at work in your life, at work in your family, at work in, in your past, at work in your present, at work in your future. So many wonderful testimonies of the power of God's awesome Word. Indeed, today, folks, we must recognize that the word of God is no empty words. Like Moses said, this is no empty words. These are no just whatever words. These are the words of life. And it is for your life. And it is for my life. And it is for living life. The life that Jesus came to bring According to John 10.10, 10, life more abundantly. That's where we find it. We sing a song years ago, I find it all in the word of God. And that's it. That's so true. And in conclusion today, we do find it all in the word of God. We do find life more abundant in the word of God. We do find hope for tomorrow in the Word of God. We do find strength for today in the Word of God. We do find healing for our bodies in the Word of God. We do find blessings untold in the Word of God. No wonder the psalmist said, hey, if I need to get happy, if I need to, if I need to find joy, if I need to rejoice, I need to go to the Word of God because the Word of God brings that to me in a real and personal way. Yeah, I'm paraphrasing what David said, but that's what David lived, and that's what David experienced. You see, the foundation of all joy is life. You're not experiencing joy if you're not alive. I mean, the foundation of joy, right, is life. You got to have life if you're going to have joy. I mean, does that make sense? The logical progression here, which is what I like to do and the way my mind works, the foundation of all joy is life, and the foundation of all life is what? The Word of God. That's why Jesus said, man shall not live, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. If you're truly going to live, if you're truly going to experience abundant life, it's going to be via the word of God. Nothing is more fundamental to our sheer existence, our creation, our preservation, than the Word of God. It's the all-powerful Word of the Almighty God. And by that same power, God has spoken in Scripture for the creation and the sustenance of our spiritual life. So yeah, in conclusion, no empty words, no vain words, no just just talk, just stuff and nonsense. No, it's not that. But it's the word of life, of your very life, of my very life, the foundation of all joy is life, and the foundation of life is the Word of God, and we need to live under His Word, His truth, His will, His ways. Can I get a witness, somebody? That's the Word for today. 
Come on. That's what we're talking about, living under the Word. The Word of God. If we're of God, if we're the people of God, we're living by the Word of God. Not the Word of man, not the Word of CNN, MSNBC, or Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS. We're living by the Word of God, by the Word of truth that God has declared. I wouldn't live any other way, especially looking around and seeing where we are in this world and the situations around us. We desperately need God's word to live God's life, God's way. Can I get a witness? Lord, help us to do just that. Help us, Lord, to trust. Help us to love. Help us to abide in your word. You know, the, the word we read, it lives and abides forever. Right? We need to abide in the word forever. Lord, help us to do just that today. Help me to do just that today. Lord, our prayer today in this house is that you would help us. Lord, help us to recognize the authority and the importance and the imperative nature of your word in our lives and over our lives. May it be a canopy. May it be an, um, may it be an umbrella. May it, Lord, be a covering for our lives so that we can live the life of God via the word of God that you have called us to live. Life abundant. Life filled with joy. Life filled with peace. Life filled with hope. It all begins and ends with life through your word. Help us today to not just receive the word, but to read the word and to live the word with your help and your strength. In Jesus' name. And if you agree with that, would you say amen? And amen. And amen. Praise God. Amen, somebody. Well, that's a good word about the word today. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God is right. The word of God is true. The word of God is eternal. The word of God will direct your life. But you've got to choose it. So choose wisely. If you're watching, choose wisely. If you're in the house, choose wisely. Choose to live life under the word of God. Amen. That's it. That's what we have. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. And may the rest of your week be filled with those good choices, the right choices, the best choice, the imperative that you have, which is to live your life under the word of God. God bless you is our prayer. You're dismissed. Go with God. Hey, it's a sweet day at Restore Church. We, we, we're just sweet people. And uh, we, have, we have some sweetness for you all. We have C's candy available for everybody. Sorry, John, um, not you. But uh, for everybody, everybody else. But you can take it and share it with somebody else maybe. Uh, I meant to bring some, some um, sugar-free candy just so John would have some too. But uh, I, I forgot it at home. So I'll bring it. But we have sugar donuts and we have C's candy. They're available right backstage. You have a backstage pass, so come over here and uh, you will get your own individual little bags of C's candy and enjoy the sweetness of the Lord. God bless you.